Now for your forecast first, WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Well, I was just talking to uh, Chuck Williams in the studio, talking about taking a bike ride tonight. That's the type of evening we have out there. It's just beautiful, as you can see. But through Central Texas, that area of low pressure, we're watching that closely. That system is going to be coming here. And most of the energy will be south of Columbus, but we have to serve everybody. We have to serve everybody in our viewing area. That's why we're going to be weather aware late tomorrow night, but it will not be a spoiler for Friday night events. That's all coming up. So let's get back to that camera shot. I'll show you 78 degrees out there with a southwest breeze. It's kind of an indication that things are starting to get a little bit more energized. But we're going to talk more about this coming up in your forecast. But as you can see through central Alabama tomorrow night, we'll start tracking some storms. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. Columbus police investigating a pair of murders tonight. We'll tell you what we know so far as investigators search for clues in these unrelated shootings. And U.S. Senator Doug Jones personally checking on Lee County storm survivors. The tales of his trip as the area continues to recover. On your side, this is News 3 Evening Edition. Good evening and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Phil Scoggins. And I'm Teresa Whitaker. This evening we begin with breaking news. An apartment fire has claimed the life of a baby. The Phoenix City Police Department says the fire happened earlier today at the Cloverleaf Apartments located at the 2800 block of Stadium Drive. This is a look at the Cloverleaf Apartments right now. Officials were called to the scene at around 10:15 this morning. According to police, the four month old baby was taken to Piedmont Columbus Regional for treatment of burns. The child was pronounced dead at the hospital as a result of injuries from that fire. The case is currently under investigation. Also breaking in Troop County, a four-year-old boy has died after drowning in a swimming pool. Troop County Coroner Aaron Hackley confirms to News 3 that four-year-old Isaac Seha Perez was pulled from the bottom of a pool this morning. Police responded to the scene located on Willis Drive at around 10:15 this morning. Officials say at this time the drowning appears to be a tragic accident. The Columbus Columbus homicide count for 2019 jumped to 10 this morning with two unrelated shooting deaths happening within hours of each other. A woman was shot to death in a city park off Hamilton Road and a 60 year old man was shot at a bus stop near the intersection of Rigdon and Ilges Roads. News 3's Chuck Williams has been following both of the murders since early this morning. Chuck, what's new? Teresa Phil, the latest is the Muskogee County Coroner's Office is struggling to find the next of kin for one of the victims. A 33-year-old black woman was shot to death about 5 this morning at Rose Hill Park. Muskogee County Coroner Buddy Bryan knows her identity but can't locate next of kin, so he's not released her name yet. Police are not releasing many details either. The coroner says she died of multiple gunshot wounds. She also died at the scene. The other case started Tuesday night as a burglary and assault investigation. That changed at 5.08 this morning when Wilburn, when Wilburn died at the Piedmont Columbus Regional Midtown Campus. The man's name was Roy Wilburn. He also died of multiple gunshot wounds. Uh, this morning about 5 o'clock, uh, we received a call to the area of the park at uh, 33rd and Hamilton Road in reference to a deceased individual. The homicide unit is now on the scene and investigating, and that's about all we can give you right now. The coroner tells News 3 there have been 10 homicides this year. Police consider only nine of those murders, according to Major Hawk. Teresa, Phil. All right, thanks so much, Chuck. Now to an update tonight. A murder suspect charged in connection with the death of 30-year-old Steve Phillips, Jr. made an appearance in recorder's court this morning. 33-year-old Curtis Williams pleaded not guilty of killing 30-year-old Steve Phillips, Jr. in November of 2017. Prosecutors say Williams was the last person to be seen with Phillips before he died. Williams admits to detectives of being with Phillips but denies killing him. The defense says there were no weapons or shell cases found and no credible witnesses except for a federal inmate pinning him to the crime. It just seems like a very uh, non-existent case. Usually I'd say weak, but 
I don't believe there, there's a case, period. But I, I respect that, you know, the judge is ruling it's a probable cause here. And so the case will be bound over, and we'll look forward to um, trying it in a courtroom. Prosecutors say they have video footage of Phillips and Williams at a Motel 6 with two females before the murder. And only on three, former Auburn football coach Tommy Tuberville is entering into the political arena, hoping to unseat Alabama Democrat Doug Jones in the U.S. Senate. His first matchup coming up March 3rd in the GOP primary, our Elizabeth White sat down with Tumber Tuberville at his favorite barbecue restaurant in Auburn. <laughs> Tommy Tupperville easily mingles amongst the crowd at Byron Smokehouse in Auburn, something he's done for nearly 20 years when he first became Auburn's football coach. All types of people come here. And so when I was a head football coach here, I made sure I came here because you get to hear what's going on in the community. Because as a coach, you get locked in that office and watching film and on the practice field, you kind of lose a sense of reality. You can, be, you can be brought back to reality here. Tuberville says he's a leader with a long history of bringing diverse groups of people together to win. I saw where somebody said, well, he was a football coach. He doesn't know how to govern. What the heck do you think I've been doing? I, as a football coach, you're, res you're responsible for a $100 million budget. You coach 128, 19-year-olds, trying to teach them the ways of life. You're their parent, basically. Bring them together, you know, and then try to win. Now I've got a bigger team. You know, if I can win this election, which I plan on doing, uh, I plan on being the coach for all of Alabama, everybody. Tuberville is a proud President Trump supporter who he credits with getting the economy back on track. He believes Trump puts Americans first. To roll Tuberville plans to fill as an outspoken advocate for Alabamians if he wins. They're going to have a hard time not voting for me. I don't care whether they're Democrat or Republican because I think I speak for a majority of the people in this state. And I know a lot of people in this country are wanting somebody to go to Congress to say, listen, let's get something done. And that was Elizabeth White reporting. For more on this story, you can visit us at WRBL.com. On the other side of the aisle, local officials met with U.S. Senator Doug Jones this afternoon, a little over a month after tornadoes ripped through Lee County. News 3's Angelicia Bruton reports now on the progress being made as the county recovers. Angelicia. Bill and Teresa, U.S. Senator Doug Jones actually visited Lee County in March shortly after the storm to thank first responders, volunteers, and to speak with victims. Today, he met with the local officials to see what concerns need to be addressed in Washington. Jones says that during the meeting, EMA directors and FEMA addressed where they are with their cleanup process and rebuilding of homes. He says right now the main focus is learning from this, from this storm, better preparing for future storms, and making sure that the victims have access to recovery so resources. We've got, uh, I think the district attorney down here has in, it been involved. Uh, I'd like to see lawyers get involved on a pro, mo pro bono basis to help uh, with these folks. And then there's just FEMA money that is there um, that they need to reapply for, that they need to know exactly how to do this. This is not an easy process. Jones says that with all the help Lee County is receiving from the community and its officials, he, see, he sees Lee County coming back from this storm even stronger. Local officials say that as they move forward from the storm, they are looking for better ways to prepare for future storms to place shelters in areas throughout Lee County where people are more vulnerable. Phil and Teresa. All right, thank you so much, Angelicia. Happening now, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey hosting the Auburn men's basketball team at the Governor's Mansion. The men's basketball team made program history in 2019, of course, with their first ever Final Four NCAA appearance. News 3 Shakira Speaks is joining us live from that celebration now. Shakira. That's right, Phil, Teresa, I'm at the Governor's Mansion in Montgomery where the Auburn men's basketball team walked out in front of their band while their band was playing songs that they're normally used to while they're playing on the court in front of about 200 people from the Alabama Senate and the House and in front of other family and friends. Governor Kay Ivey honored the team for their efforts in the NCAA tournament. Head coach Bruce Pearl says they only do things one way. That's how these guys came to Auburn, on a promise that together we could be competitive, we could be relevant, maybe we could be champions, but above all, we're going to do it the Auburn way. You saw it in victory. Unfortunately, we saw it 
because we weren't able to finish the job and, and win it all. The event just ended and Governor Ivey declared today Auburn Men's Basketball Team Day and presented the team with a written declaration. Coming up on the Night Watch, you can hear what else Governor Kay Ivey had to say, plus what head coach Bruce Pearl had to say about their efforts in the NCAA tournament. For now, though, sending things back to you in the studio live in Montgomery and on your side, I'm News 3's Shakira Speaks. Thank you so much, Shakira. And coming up on Evening Edition. When your grandmother is so impressed with your teacher, she nominates her for a Golden Apple Award. You'll meet this week's recipient coming your way next. And that 82 degree mark just tells us again that temperatures are warm out there. and We're not seeing any rain just yet, but that's coming up. But not everybody will see it when we talk about late storms arriving late tomorrow night. And it's dry out there, maybe invigorating, and the air quality, believe it or not, looking good for soot and particulate matter. The pollen, still an issue. This week, our search for an outstanding teacher took us to Winton Arts Academy. That's where News 3's Carlos Williams presented the Connecticut Credit Union Golden Apple Award to fourth grade teacher Christina Crouch. Crouch, a CSU grad with six years of teaching under her belt, was nominated by grandparent Beverly Ribido, who told us how Miss Crouch creates songs to help her students learn, and she says Crouch has a way of making every student feel special. Ms. Crouch was overjoyed to receive the award. Um, I definitely feel very blessed right now. Um, it has been a wonderful year at Winton Arts Academy, and I'm so in love with each of my students and my parents and the family here at Winton Arts Academy, so it's definitely just a blessing. Thank Congratulations you. once again to Winton Arts Academy language arts teacher Christina Crouch. And if you know an outstanding teacher like her, nominate them by going to WRBL.com. You'll find the nomination form there. All right, Great. back to the weather now and the weather aware alert. Yeah, not aware yet. or alert. Oh, we're going one? to where? We're not getting all crazy, but it's going to be for a portion of our southern counties. we got to watch tomorrow night. So it's, it's just before the damaging wind impact that would likely come with the system, and we're going to talk about that. As far as the pollen, pollen's still high out there from the grass to the trees. These, those are the two top contenders when it comes to trees, pecan and hackberry, from our friends from the Allergy Center of Brookstone. Nice night tonight. We'll be back with that weather aware night coming up. News 3 brings you your first alert forecast. So this evening, it's a nice evening. It's a lovely evening indeed. And coming up, of course, we're looking at temperatures that are going to remain in the 80s. You're not going to see that fall short of that for the next several days, unless you get a lot of rain at one time. Cooling it down, of course, the morning lows aren't going to be in the 80s, but daytime high readings will remain just like what you're seeing right now, if not even warmer if not even warmer. It was teetering in Savannah, Georgia today, near 90 degrees. It just almost hit 90 today, and it's the coastal areas, quite warm. Hour by hour forecast, I'm jumping ahead a bit for your Thursday. When we say weather aware day, it was, it was, it was good that we we're talking to anchors about this before in a commercial break. It's, it's setting it up saying, hey, we're making you aware. There's, there's some weather that could come in. It's a little inclement, could be disruptive. It doesn't have to be like a March 3rd day. When we're alert, we know it's already imminent, it's happening. We're 100% confident people is going to be a big impact area. But we're just looking at a portion of our area tomorrow, but the day will be nice. So enjoy the day, even though we're weather we're late in the day. And we're looking at upper 70s, about 81 is what we'll top off to. And here's why we're weather aware night <laughs> for the weather aware day, northeast Texas. Area low pressure, sending a nice good wave here. We call this a complex of storms. They're usually long-lived, they could travel a distance, and with them, they could sometimes bow out and really produce some strong gusty winds. And we see that through central Alabama, coming up around midday tomorrow, 11 o'clock central time. This will be right along Highway 80, once you get into areas around Demopolis, where I-20 kind of intersects here, especially farther south and east through Mississippi. Then there looks like there's a little bit of energy coming in here around 9, 7, or 8. Got to watch that, but the models are doing something kind of fickle here. But south and west, you can see where the heavier precipitation is, and with this particular model, likely some thunderstorms capable maybe with some gusty winds. I don't think the model's doing really well on it, but the setup is there. So we're looking at farther south and west, south of Columbus, and then south and east of Columbus, which could take us all the way through 11 o'clock, 10 central, possibly 
getting into the very early overnight, but not like what we had last week. Remember that slow moving storm? It was much farther north and there was heavy rain upstream and that's what caused, of course, the dams had to do their normal release and we had to have all that excess water coming out and timing out perfectly. That's why the river levels rose, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to see that. This would be farther south, so it wouldn't have that same impact when it comes to a flood hazard. In the morning, though, there might just be a smattering of a shower too early, but get this, Friday night, Uptown Concert Series and much more. We should be good later. There could be just a little brush with some energy, but I think we're going to be good. In fact, the weekend looks spectacular again. Sunshine, that'll be nice. Overnight forecast, enjoy. It's going to be mild and 60. That's your low. The winds have been a little breezy and gusty out there today, haven't they? But they will continue that way. It'll be breezy at times for the overnight, maybe occasional gust of 15. Tomorrow, I'm going to go about sou southerly winds, 10 to 20. And again, 9 o'clock. 8 Eastern, we'll start watching south of Montgomery, coming into areas south of Columbus, 81 for a high. So the day looks good. It's really tomorrow night late, and that's why we're weather aware at that portion of the day. And then it continues for very early Friday morning. It's just showers, and we clear in the afternoon. So really, technically, the weekend's good, because you consider Friday the weekend. Friday night events looking good. A little breezy and gusty, though. It's going to be breezy uh, throughout the day. And then Saturday and Sunday look great again. Nothing wrong with a little breeze. So, yeah, summer breeze makes me feel fine. <laughs> Low under the jazz. Low under the jazz. Low under the jazz. Low under the jazz. It's still spring. We're not in, wait, it's not summer yet. Wait. We need Spotify when you got Bob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I have to All right, let's talk about high school playoffs. They are taking center stage. We're talking about baseball. We're talking about soccer, tennis, sports all over the place today. I am just so thankful we're right next to the coffee machine. Guys, <laughs> yep, we have a full plate of high school uh, playoffs coming up right after this break. We'll start with baseball and go around the crazy world of sports. Stick around, guys. Time for News 3 Sports. Spring is in full swing now, y'all. Today was the first round of the GHSA baseball playoffs. Combine that with the high school ten tennis playoffs still marching on. By the way, there's also some soccer postseason games to get to as well. It's a packed sports day, y'all. Thank goodness the coffee was nearby. Let's start at Golden Park. Blue Devils taking on Hampton High. Bottom of the first, Devils. We'll have a runner on third. The wild pitch gets away from Hampton. Kobe Brabson sprints home, and the Blue Devils take the early 1-0 lead. Bottom second now, Devils stay hot. Austin Hicks, the pitcher, shows off the soft touch with his beautiful bunt. That would load the bases. Next up, Davis Livingston cranks this bad boy. Has has power to get it deep, and it bounces off the wall. That would bring in two more Blue Devils to come on home. Columbus dominates game one, 10 nothing in five innings. Over at Brookstone, the Cougars hosted Hebron Christian. Cougars trailing 6 nothing in the top of the fourth. Garrett Howe causing more headaches. Hammers this one to the warning track. He gets a stand-up double. A few batters later, Thomas Heedley slaps this one through the left side. How come on down. Cougars now trail 7-0. Bottom fourth, Brookstone bats would finally wake up. Adam Lowry cranks it deep to left field. That young man has a stand-up double. A few batters later, Luke Norman hits a chopper to third. Infielder goes to first, and the Cougars finally get on the board. But Hebron was just too much for Brookstone in game one. Cougars fall 7-2. Let's catch up with some of the scores from around the area after two innings. Callaway on top of Banks County, 6-0. Up in Class 4A, the north side. Patriots dominating each side, 8-1. LaGrange on the road as well. They're in a tight one against Stevens County, 5-3. Three, check back with us in the Night Watch for more fi uh, final scores and follow us on social media for final scores as well. Over to tennis. Playoff action. Columbus hosting LaGrange in the 5A Elite 8 at Lake Bottom. Mary Weston. Corvo won the first point and she gets the ace right here. She won her match in just two games. To the other single, Sydney McRae from Columbus facing LaGrange's Andy Polly Polly with a perfectly placed underhand. But McRae would respond. The serve cannot be returned. This was a battle. They split the first two games. McRae won the third game 7 5 to win the match. Over to number two doubles. Blue Doubles Kelsey Human with the forehand. But LaGrange's Kaylee Key slams it right back. Lexi Greer from Columbus had an answer right here. Here, sees the opening, takes advantage. Blue Devils win it in two games. Number one doubles, Sherry Offenbach and Kendra Woodman dominate it early and often. Sherry gets the slam for the point. They would win the point and the match as Columbus wins this one 5 0 to advance to the final four. So Columbus is one step closer to winning a title. And speaking of winning titles, the Columbus State men and women are trying to win some hardware too. This past weekend, both teams won the Peach Belt Conference, their third time in a row winning the tournament. Both teams also have won the PBC regular season championship three years in a row. Now they're getting ready for the NCAA tournament. Last year, the men won the whole thing for the very first time, while the women made it to their first ever semifinal. Yeah, we definitely have a target on our back, but um, the goal, you know, we're still as hungry as we were last year, and I think that's going to be a huge factor in whether we can go back to back. But um, 
yeah, we have a target on our back. We have a lot of good teams after us, but we still have the same focus and same mentality, so I, I think it's definitely possible. Well, when you get to this point where you know you were going to finish, I, I feel personally that I value it more. I feel ex actually more motivated to work hard every day because I know there's going to be a point where I won't have this opportunity anymore. So I always try my best. The men and women will host the first round matches on May 11th. Guys, stick around. We have more news for you coming up right after this. Okay, temperatures are all about the 80s, and we can walk you ahead in time with some temperatures and show what the computer models will do. Thursday's looking good through the entire day. Look at this. As we get in the overnight, more clouds coming in, upper 50s to 60 for lows. And by afternoon, we're pushing those temperatures back into the 80 degree range. And then we start watching tomorrow night at this time. A few possible shower or pop up thunderstorm. And through central Alabama, we'll be watching farther south and west later in the evening for some strong gusty winds for like Clay Quitman, Randolph counties. But we, we are weather aware for that for our folks in southern counties. And if that was to even kind of lift back up northward. But rainfall amounts will not be that impressive if you're waiting for some rain. All right, Bob, yes. thank you. And that's going to do it for evening edition. Have a safe and pleasant evening, everyone. Good night.